Welcome to lecture 5.2 over sum and difference formulas. <clears throat> We're continuing through the chapter on analytic trigonometry here. So we'll go ahead and look at the objectives for this section. Okay, so we are going to um, learn how to use the formula for cosine of the difference of two angles, sum and difference formulas for cosines and sines, and um, using sum and difference formulas for tangents. So we'll be given these formulas on the next slide, and then it's going to be reminiscent of lecture 5.1, and then the rest is just going to be, you know, examples of us using these formulas. Okay, so here we have um, the formulas for uh, sine and cosine with sums and differences. And so we'll just look at this first one listed here um, because I think once we look at one of them, the rest of them will be kind of self-explanatory with, with how it's broken down. Um, okay, so we'll look at this first one here for um, so, uh, sum of a cosine. So uh, if I have the cosine of some angle alpha uh, added to some angle beta, that is, welcome Roy, glad to have you this afternoon. Um, that's the same exact thing as if I took the cosine of alpha, multiplied it by the cosine of beta, and then subtracted the sine of alpha multiplied by the sine of beta. So I'm not going to go through and read each of these to you. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. If you have your lecture note sheets with you, you'll, you'll see that these are listed right at the top of your note sheets, and um, you'll just want to keep that uh, readily available to you to reference as you move through these next examples because they all come back to this and then we also have the unit circle to reference as well for exact values. So we'll go ahead and look at how we can use these formulas. Okay, so you can see that the first question here is asking us to verify that the cosine of 90 degrees minus 60 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So all I'm going to do is take the cosine of 90 degrees minus 60 degrees and use my um, difference cosine formula to see if um, when, I, when I simplify that expression, uh, if it comes out to be the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so um, we start with the cosine difference formula, and I'll write this up at the top to have it for reference here. So the cosine difference formula says that the cosine of alpha minus beta is the same exact thing as the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the sine <clears throat> of alpha times the sine of beta. So we're going to use that formula up there to see if 
um, the cosine of 90 degrees minus 60 degrees truly does equal square root of 3 over 2. And I included the unit circle just so you wouldn't have to flip back through your notes to um, get those values that we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and get started with this. The first thing I'm going to do is simplify well, it doesn't look like it's simplifying because I'm actually expanding it out. So I'll, 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 re, I'll use different words and say I'm going to expand out the cosine of 90 degrees minus 60 degrees using the difference for, the cosine difference formula there. So expanding this, it would look like the cosine of 90 degrees times the cosine of 60 degrees plus the sine of 90 degrees times the sine of 60 degrees. Okay, so um, the reason that I put the unit circle on here is so that we can just go grab those values. This is going to be a very quick problem for us to finish. So the cosine of 90 degrees, remember um, when you're taking the cosine of an angle, that is going to correspond to the x-coordinate um, on the unit circle. So um, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, so I have 0, times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 1 half. And I'll switch colors for the sine of those two. The sine corresponds to the y value. So the sine of 90 degrees is 1, and the sine of 60 degrees is square root 3 over 2. All right, so now all I have to do is calculate here. So 0 times 1 half is 0 plus 1 times the square root of 3 over 2 is square root 3 over 2. 0 plus anything is itself, so we end up with the square root of 3 over 2, which is exactly what we wanted to end up to verify that that thing equals the square root of 3 over 2. So this is a pretty simple example, so I'm sure, Roy, you're probably good with this. Yes, you've already given me the check. We'll move forward. Okay, so I'm just going to write uh, the formula that we're going to use here to work with the cosine of 70 degrees times the cosine of 40 degrees plus the sine of 70 degrees times the sine of 40 degrees. That comes, that, that should look very much like the setup for um, the formula that we just used, the, the cosine difference formula. So once again, we have the cosine of alpha minus beta equaling the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. So now you can see why I said this fits the bill for the cosine difference formula there. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change this expanded form because I don't, I don't have 70 degrees and 40 degrees anywhere on my unit circle here. Um, but uh, the reason I went with the cosine difference formula is because not, not only does that fit the mold of it, but also if I subtract 40 degrees from 70 degrees, I end up with 30 degrees. And look right here. I've got 30 degrees sitting on my unit circle just waiting for me to grab it. So that is what I'll do is condense it back down into the cosine of alpha minus beta. So this whole expression here is equal to the cosine of alpha, which is 70 degrees, minus beta, 
which is 40 degrees. That's the same thing as the cosine of 30 degrees. And once again, when we take the cosine of an angle on the unit circle, we're talking about the x value of it. So I can go straight to the fact that this is square root 3 over 2. Roy, I assume you're good again. All right. Thank you for joining me today, Roy. It's nice to see you again. Okay, um, no worries on missing this morning. I actually changed the time again this morning. I've had a lot going on um, just in my personal life, and so it just, 9 o'clock did not work for me this morning, and so it got bumped to 10.30. So in all honesty, I didn't expect anybody to show up for this morning or for this afternoon because I scheduled it so late. Um, but uh, I am going to go ahead and schedule the remainder of the lectures because I do have some conferences and things coming up. So hopefully I'll be able to keep, uh, keep a consistent schedule uh, for the last few weeks of the semester here. Um, it, it's exciting because we are almost to the end of our journey through uh, pre-calculus. All right, so um, this particular problem poses a, a little bit more of a challenge, so maybe it'll feel a little more interesting for you. Um, and so with these sorts of problems here, you, you have to be clever, and you have to really know your previous material to be able to see how to move forward um, with, uh, with verifying this identity. Um, so the first thing that junk, jumps out at me is that I have a cosine of alpha minus beta in the numerator. And um, so I know from my cosine difference formula that if I expand this uh, using that formula that I'm going to have cosines as well as sines come into play if I expand that out. And that would be very desirable to me because if I, if I look at this right-hand side here that I'm trying to equate to, um, I see tangents floating around. So the first thing that I want to remind you of is that the tangent, and we learned this way back at the very beginning of chapter four, the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. Um, so, um, so, so it would be very desirable for me to try to somehow get some signs happening in the numerator here to hopefully divide out and create some tangents for myself. So that's what I'm going to do first is use my cosine difference formula to expand the numerator there. I'm not going to write the cosine difference formula out because I'm working with alphas and betas here instead of exact um, values. So as soon as I rewrite that numerator, that will be the given cosine formula. So that numerator becomes the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta. I apologize for my whining dog in the background. It's thundering here, but of course she's begging to go out to go hunt squirrels. So um, cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. And that's all being divided by the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta. And I'm going to pause the recording real quick.
Okay, so um, once again, I want to somehow move towards sine divided by cosine. So at this point, the only thing that I can see to do is to perhaps split this uh, this fraction that has added uh, two terms in the numerator back into their respective single fractions that happened to have a common denominator. So that's where I'm going to move to with this. So now this is the same exact thing as having cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta divided by cosine alpha cosine beta plus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta divided by cosine alpha cosine beta. So now I'm sure it's pretty evident now why I say you kind of have to be clever with these and sometimes these things don't just jump out at you and you may try one thing and it doesn't work and you got to come back to the drawing board and try something new. So the good news is, is this entire first fraction, I've got the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta divided by cosine alpha times cosine beta, that whole thing is just one. That's something being divided by itself. So I'll just simplify and write that here, one plus sine alpha sine beta over cosine alpha cosine beta. I'm sorry, yeah, cosine beta. One moment. Okay. All right, so um once again, let me remind you up here that we stated that the tangent is equal to the sine divided by the cosine. And look what we have here. We have the sine of alpha being divided by the cosine of alpha and the sine of beta being divided by the cosine of beta. So I can now say that this is the same thing as 1 plus, let me color code this here, this right here is equivalent to the tangent of alpha, and this right here is equivalent to the tangent of beta. And sure enough, we have manipulated this to come out and verify that um, that this thing we started out with here is the same exact thing as 1 plus tangent alpha times tangent beta. Okay, Roy, do you have any questions about that one? Okay, Roy's typing something. Oh, Roy says, nope, I'm good. We will move forward. Okay, so this next one that we're looking at um, is basically straight up calculation and pulling values off of the unit circle again. And they even give you a pretty good jump on the problem in that um, they tell you that 5 pi divided by 12 is equivalent to pi over 6 plus pi over 4. So they're going ahead and taking that fraction and turning it into a sum for you. So we're trying to figure out what the exact value of the sine of 5 pi over 12 is. And 
if you look through the unit circle, we don't have 5 pi over 12, but we do have pi over 6, and we do have pi over 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as the sine of pi over 6 plus pi over 4. And now what I've done is turned that into the sine sum formula, or I've turned it into that type of expression that I can use the sine sum formula for. So I'll write that up here for you at the top, and this just is coming from that very first slide we looked at with all of those formulas on it. And we have the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. So I'm just going to turn this into, um, expand it out into that form. So this is the same exact thing as the sine of pi over 6 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus the cosine of pi over 6 times the sine of pi over 4. All right, now all I have to do is locate these values on my unit circle over there and just do the math. So we'll start with um, the sine of pi over 6. So the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And the cosine of pi over 4 is square root 2 over 2. So for that first term, what I actually have happening is 1 half times square root 2 over 2. And I'm going to add, let me get a different color here. I will add the cosine of pi over 6, square root 3 over 2 times the sine of pi over 4, which is square root 2 over 2. So I have square root 3 over 2 times square root 2 over 2. And fractional math, I, when I'm multiplying fractions, I multiply straight across. So 1 times square root 2 is square root 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus square root 3 times square root 2 is square root 6 and 2 times 2 is 4. I have a common denominator, so I can put these together and say this is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 over 4. Now, don't fall into the trap of trying to um, simplify this 2, 6, and 4. That 2 and that 6 are not 2s and 6s. They are square root 2s and square root 6s. Those are irrational numbers. They are not even, so I cannot take a factor of two out of all of those. So that's what you're left with. It doesn't feel good, but that's it. Square root two plus square root six over four. You good to go, Roy? Very good. We have a couple more problems to look at. And this next problem that we're going to look at is actually four problems all in one. So it's a doozy. Okay, so I'm hoping that I have enough room to work all this on the screen. If not, um, I can, uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and insert a new page into this. So let me give myself a clean page after that. All right, and I'm going to go back. There we go. Okay, so, um, oh, and it looks like I cut off the end of the problem. Awesome. So let me first write notes. 
No, ma'am. Let me first write what they're asking us to find with this particular um, set of information here. Um, so it says find the exact value of, well, we're asked to find the cosine of alpha. We're asked to find the cosine of beta. We're asked to find cosine of alpha plus beta and cosine of alpha, I'm sorry, in the sine of alpha plus beta. Let me fix that. In the sine of alpha plus beta. Okay, so we'll start with the cosine of alpha and the cosine of beta. We're told that the sine of alpha is equivalent to four-fifths. So um, I have this partial diagram here. Um, since we know that the sine of alpha is four-fifths and that it's in quadrant two, um, I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse and um, so I am able to label the um, opposite leg of the right triangle as four, and I'm able to label the hypotenuse as five. So I'm actually going to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the length of um, X is. So uh, the Pythagorean theorem states that X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, if I'm talking about the, the circle there, or you, you usually see it as A squared plus B squared equals C squared, um, but really the letters standing for the sides don't really matter as long as we know that um, the legs add up, or the legs squared add up to um, the hypotenuse squared. So, all right, so what I don't know is the x value. So x squared plus 4 squared has to equal 5 squared. So that's x squared plus 16 equals 25. Subtract 16 from both sides, and I get x squared is 9. So x has to equal 3 when I take the square root of both sides. Um, and actually, it equals positive or negative 3. But since we're talking about a distance, the length of that side is 3. Now, here's the tricky part. We're told that this exists in quadrant 2. So. Um, when I go to try to find the cosine of that, um, the cosine of that uh, angle there, then I have to use that fact that it's in the second quadrant. So let's just talk about, okay, we're looking for the cosine of alpha here. The cosine is given by x over r, and I'm not going to plug in 3 for x, because if that thing, let me get a different color here, if this is living in quadrant 2, then this coordinate point has to have an x value of negative 3. So I'm actually going to plug in negative 3 for my x value, and that will be divided by 5. So the exact value of the cosine of alpha is negative 3 fifths. Let me stop there and ask you if that's okay, Roy, if that makes sense. Okay, very good. All right, let me get a different color for our next part of the problem. Let me do this one in a, get a very different color. 
see this one in the blue. Okay, so same thing with this next set of information. We're told that the sine of beta is equal to one half. And um, so we can use the fact that the sine of beta is equal to one half and that it's living in quadrant one to help us figure out what the cosine of beta is. Um, just to give you a preview, to find the cosine of beta, we also need to do x divided by r there. Um, we don't have the x value. We've got the y value and the radius value of that triangle. So we'll use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the x value is. So x squared plus y squared is r squared. x squared plus 1 squared is 2 squared. x squared plus 1 is 4. Subtract 1. x squared is 3, which means x is equal to the square root of 3. When I plug that in for my cosine beta into the numerator, it's going to be a positive square root of 3 because it's living in quadrant 1. So I had to go to the right, which is the positive direction. So the cosine of beta is simply the square root of 3 over 2 there. All right, you good to move forward with the two last portions of the problem, Roy? Great. <clears throat> okay, I'm just looking at my page to see what I need to transfer over. All right, so we need to um, we need to know that the cosine of alpha, we got negative three-fifths for that. We need to know that we got the cosine of beta as square root three over two. We also need to know the given information that the sine of alpha is four-fifths and that the sine of beta is one-half. Okay, so that's all the information that we had from the last page. All right, so with this particular one, we're looking for the cosine of alpha plus beta. So we've got to use that cosine sum function or formula that we were given at the very beginning. And that is cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta. Now, all I have to do is plug in values that I have listed right above. Cosine alpha is negative 3 fifths times cosine beta is square root 3 over 2 minus sine alpha is 4 fifths times sine beta is 1 half. So fractional math, you multiply a fraction straight across. This is negative 3 square root 3 over 10 minus 4 over 10. And since they have a common denominator, I can put them together. And I get negative 3 square root 3 minus 4 over 10. This could also be written as the negative out front, which if you're doing this in my math lab, I believe they will want you. Okay, yeah, I just saw that you said you have to pay attention to the quadrant. You do on the last page. <laughs> Sorry about that, Roy. Um, with my math lab, it, it, ha it has a tendency to not like a leading negative term like that. So I'm assuming that they will want you to factor that negative out front and um, you'll be left with 3 square root 3 plus 4 over 10, and that whole thing becomes negative like that. Did that make sense, or do you need to see that factoring of the negative, Roy? Okay, Roy's good. All right, and the last thing for this particular problem that we have to look at is the sine of alpha plus beta. 
so the formula that we're given for that is sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. And once again, we're just putting values in and doing our, doing our calculation here. So we have the sine of alpha, which is 4 fifths, times the cosine of beta, square root 3 over 2, plus cosine alpha, negative 3 fifths, times sine beta, 1 half. So this is 4 square root 3 over 10 minus 3 over 10. So I end up with 4 square root 3 minus 3 over 10. We have one more problem to look at after we gain a little bit of knowledge on sum and difference of tangent. Okay, so here are the formulas for tangent. We have the tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta divided by 1 minus the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta. And um, then uh, the only difference in the, with the difference of tangent is that you have uh, subtraction in the numerator and addition in the denominator. So your signs... Uh, change positions there um, for the for the tangent difference formula. Okay, so um, we are asked to verify that the tangent of x plus pi is equal to the tangent of x. So if you notice right here, we have the tangent of a sum. And I'll just uh, write up at the top our tangent sum formula. So we have the tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta. divided by 1 minus the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta. And another helpful piece of information to recall is that um, we are given the tangent of an angle by dividing the uh, y distance or length over the x length. So those are the coordinates of those lengths. So um, that, that can be helpful to know as well. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just turn this tangent of this sum into the expanded form here. And that looks like this. That's the same thing as the tangent of x plus the tangent of pi divided by 1 minus the tangent x times the tangent pi. Okay, so the reason I wrote that the tangent is equal to y over x is that we can get exact values for the tangent of pi. The tangent of pi is equal to 0 divided by negative 1 on the unit circle, so that's just 0. The tangent of pi is equal to 0. So plugging that in gives us the tangent of x plus 0 divided by 1 minus the tangent of x times 0. All right. And it's good that we're multiplying by 0 and adding 0 because we're getting rid of a lot there. 
Um, so uh, when we calculate here, we're left with a tangent of x in the numerator, and we're left with 1 in the denominator, and we know that anything divided by 1 is just itself, the tangent of x. So you can see here, we have verified that the tangent of x plus pi is no different than just taking the tangent of x. That's all I got for you, Roy. That covers the entire 5.2 section. Do you have any questions? None at the moment. Excellent. Well, thank you again for joining me this afternoon. And just shoot me an email if any questions come up as you're going through this homework. You have a good night, too. Thanks, Roy. Bye-bye. Have a good Easter weekend, too. <laughs>